Hello world, I have just been having a ramble through uh, these editions of the ABBA magazine that I found lurking around and I've made a video but it's turned into a very long one with a, a, a ton of editing which I'll do at some point in the future but I just thought I'd share with you there's an article in here about uh, the compact disc in fact there are two articles in fact one was where ABBA collected an award called the golden gramophone in 1982 for services to music and they themselves heard a compact disc at the time so I'll, I'll, I'll share with you that bit and then there's an article about the compact disc in here as well. This is what people were saying about the compact disc back in the day. All right, just because it's interesting. Back in Germany, Berliner, that's Emil Berliner, that's the his master's voice man, uh, founded Deutsche Grammophon, which is now part of the polygram giant, who nearly a hundred years later are instrumental in taking records out of the 19th century with the newly invented, in quotes, compact disc. So while Bjorn and Benny were together to receive the replica of yesterday's gramophone, they were invited to listen to tomorrow's record player, the compact disc digital audio system. Polygram's president, Jan Timmer, explained how the compact disc works to the boys. Instead of a needle, a laser scans the minute indentations or pits which are protected from scratches and dust because they are literally inside the disc. This means no wear on the disc surface and no surface noise. Added to that is the elimination of all distortion. So the manufacturers are claiming that what you hear is precisely what the studio engineer heard. In practice, what Benny and Bjorn heard was even more. While they were listening to the visitors on the new system, they thought they heard a fault in the disc when some hiss came over in a few bars. That's not the disc, that is the recording, explained Timmer. Our engineers reckon this section was mastered conventionally without the use of digital gear. The boys couldn't understand how this could have occurred but put it down to a switch being thrown by accident. Whatever the case, this alone was an ample demonstration of the compact disc clarity and quality in picking up a noise that was inaudible on black vinyl. Bear with me, I'm just going to turn the light on because this is blue against blue and I can't read blue against blue, it's doing my editing. Pardon me for the hiatus. As Benny and Bjorn have recently experienced, the era of perfect sound reproduction is dawning. But if it has taken a hundred years to develop a faultless record, then what's been the hold-up? Surely anyone could throw together these seemingly undramatic pieces of clear plastic that boldly process, profess to be the new world standard in audio performance. The whole compact disc digital audio system was developed by Philips and Sony on a joint basis and CD players are already on sale in Japan by about 10 different manufacturers who have obtained permission to make the hardware, as it is termed. Polygram have been pressing the discs for the UK market since the summer in a new factory set up for the purpose. Computers. Because of the accuracy and precision required to make a compact disc, no dust or foreign matter must be allowed in certain stages of production. That's the same for vinyl records. Sorry, Charlie. So there are several clean rooms at the factory with highly productive air conditioning. This is only the same as rooms that contain computers and indeed the disc owes much of its development to computer technology. Computers are digital machines that use the binary code. The binary code consists of two numbers, zero and one, and computers express all numbers as a combination of these two. This is because 
in its simplest form, a computer sends its information as a combination of electrical impulses. One represents an impulse, zero represents no impulse. The pits on a digital disc are the equivalent of a record's grooves, yet these pits occur at varying frequency and size. The laser beam passes over the reflective inner surface that is punctuated by the pits. When the beam hits the reflective surface, the machine reads its reflection. When the beam hits a pit, the light is scattered in all directions and not re reflected back into the machine. The sequence of pits is therefore read as a sequence of on and off laser light impulses, which are decoded into sound. This is essentially the binary code, the system the computer uses. Prices. The general public, that's you and I, won't be able to buy a disc or player until March 83, that would have been. Although demonstrations should be taking place at shops and exhibitions beforehand. By March, there should be around 200 LP titles available on compact disc on labels such as Polydor, Philips, RSO and Mercury. Each disc will cost in the region of eight to 10 pounds. This was when a record, an LP record, would have cost under a fiver, 450, 499, your chart LP. So eight to 10 pound was incredibly expensive at the time. So each disc will cost in the region of eight to 10 pound, however. And what's more, the machines to play them will cost about 400 pounds. Again, that was just astronomical in 1982. I'll have to look up what a pound costs in 1982 or what a pound was worth. Hold on. One pound in 1982. A pound in 1982 was worth about three pound 39 today. So what we're saying is that 10 pound for a CD, just to keep the math simple, 33 pound 90 and a, a CD player itself would be 400 times 3.39. The answer is 1,356. Thank you, Siri. As these small but expensive players plug into your hi-fi, the general public will compare them in price at least to the conventional turntable and record arm costing far less. That is why I mouth an expletive. Because the disc player will plug into your hi-fi. Therefore, if you hear what the engineer heard, your hi-fi is going to ha is going to have to be worth thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds and be situated in a brilliantly acoustic environment and you are not going to hear what the engineer heard. You're going to hear something that might be you know, similar to what the engineer heard, but on a much, much smaller scale. It can be assumed that as with video, the price will decrease as competition increases. Philips especially have put many years and many more Dutch guilders into the research, and that is what these prices reflect. Enthusiasm. However, the UK music industry is used to seeing over 100 LPs released each week and even by the end of 1983 it is expected that only around 600 LPs will be available on CD. If digital audio is to succeed then the big record companies have got to agree to issue their titles on CD and as we go to press EMI have turned a blind eye to the development. As we all know, ABBA are on CBS Epic in the UK and they have no plans to release any ABBA CDs at the moment. ABBA's English representatives have even less enthusiasm for the new system. When digital audio really breaks in the UK, ABBA will be there with a release. But we can't see that happening until 1984 at the earliest. 
Certainly, most music biz people are taking the CD with a pinch of salt, and Phillips themselves see ad initial sales only to the hi-fi enthusiasts who can afford the luxury of perfect sound. If you can afford the player and you want to hear ABBA on it, then for a year or two at least, you'll have to import the Polydor version that the boys listened to in Stockholm. But throughout all of the 80s and the early 90s, ABBA's CD output was issued by Polydor and eventually it then sort of went to Polar Music, which you know now release, as I say, all of ABBA's CDs globally. However, you know, back in the day, ABBA had a different record company for each territory. There is still a further line of resistance, which no one seems to have considered so far, however. A compact disc player plays for one hour without stopping, and you can only play one side. Yet an LP plays for about 40 minutes, and you have to turn it over halfway through. Artists have been writing material to that format for years now. Will they continue to write only 40 minutes worth of material for parallel releases on CD? And if so, will consumers put up with having to buy about 20 minutes worth of silence, albeit perfectly reproduced? One thing is for certain, the digital audio revolution isn't going to happen overnight. And if enough artists, record companies and consumers don't accept it, the revolution won't happen at all. And on that note of doom and gloom, I will leave you. <laughs> Remember to like, subscribe, share if you dare, consider a thanks down below, and I will see you in the next video, which will be me looking through this, just for you to get, <laughs> get your hopes up. All right, see you later. Bye-bye. So, yeah, a pound was worth £3.39 in 1982. No. I found this on the web. Shut up, Siri.